Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 20 of my fitness database series. If you haven't watched parts 1 through 19 yet, go watch those first. As a reminder, if you don't care about fitness, that's fine. Because these techniques, tips, tricks, and all that stuff will work in every database you can build. Customers, orders, inventory, you name it. All right, let's get back to it. What are we doing today? Well... I've been promising it for a couple of lessons now, but I haven't reached, haven't found other stuff to do. We're gonna tackle that problem where you can add a food item without putting an actual meal up there. So let's talk about that. All right, so in previous videos, I showed you how you can go to a blank meal and then come down here without putting a record in up here. This is no, there's no record in here. And drop this down and put a food item in and then no problem. It just saves. and. You shouldn't be able to do that. We've got referential integrity in, in these tables, don't we? Let's double check and make sure. Database tools, relationships, yeah. Meal T, meal detail T, I got referential integrity. Let's make sure, yeah, it's enforced. So why am I allowed to do that? that I, I shouldn't be able to do that. I should have to have a parent, right, for this child record down here. Here's a meal table, okay. And let me close the form. We'll, we'll deal with this in the table. And here's meal detail table. And where are we? Okay. Oh, look at that. Look right there. Look, it's null. There's nothing in there. Why is that allowed? Well, this is one of the other reasons why I, referential integrity isn't something that I always use. I'm very, very, I use it very sparingly. The problem is this is something that a lot of people don't catch. Okay because let's delete this record for now. All right, referential integrity says for every one of these guys, you have to have a matching record up here, but it doesn't catch null values. Okay, that's one of the downsides of it. So for example, because null, it's like null math, right? Null plus anything is null, right? Um, you know, if you concatenate something with a null value, the, res the response is null. Null treats, Referential integrity the same way. Oh, you care about referential integrity? I don't care. I'm a null. I don't care about your stupid rules. Okay? So, for example, you can't get away with having a zero in there because there's no zero record up here. If I tried putting something in here and then changing to a different record, it yells at me. Okay. Just likewise, I can't put a six in there because there's no record six up there. Okay. But null? Eh, null doesn't care. Look. Oh, wait. Hold on. Yeah, see, sometimes sometimes if you do it right here, it lets you get away with it. If you do it at the form level, like we just did, you can get away with it. See? All right, it doesn't care about the fact that it's a null value. Now, the way we could take care of that and fix that, get rid of that record, is to come in here. Now, we got a default value set already as zero. Okay, but if the form sends a null value in, then it's still gonna it's still gonna save it. So what we can do is, and the the fix is really easy, but you just have to remember to do it. Set required to yes. Right. Same thing with food ID. Set required to yes. And that'll make sure that doesn't happen. You could do it with your, um, you know, you get your food group, and you got your food table. If you want to make sure you got a food group in here, again, food group ID required yes. All right, got to check, check the rules. Okay, we're good with that one. And now you can't get away with the same problem again. Uh, data integrity rules have changed. Yep, we're good. And we're good with that. Now, if I come in here and go to a new one, if I try doing the same trick, see? You must enter a value in the blah, 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 blah field. So at least now it's checking it before it lets you save that value. See? It's not a very nice... Uh, error message we'll give our own in a second but i'll just hit escape and you, you just got to remember with referential integrity it doesn't check for null values if it comes in from a form usually okay so just keep that in mind in the future now let's talk about that error message all right okay um i want to tell the user hey before you put a food item in here you have to give the meal a description right in fact 
Let's change this so it says description. Let's change it to say meal name so it's, it matches what's up top. I like that. Let's design view. Just the label. You can still leave this description, but I want this to just match meal name. Okay. All right. So now, how do we put a more friendly, you know, meal name in there? And I don't like how that's not centered. Let me fix it. Hold on. I know. I know. I know. I got it. Oh, let me see here. Let's move this up where it was. There we go. That looks better. I, whenever you have a label that the font size isn't the same as the text box, it just drives me nuts. Let's see. How's that look? Okay, that looks better. Maybe go one little bit to the left. I know. I know. I know. It's crazy stuff like this that bothers me. We'll do that. And then just I need. Okay, good. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. It's those little those, those little things that make my OCD. I don't. I don't have OCD, but you know, it just it drives me nuts. Okay. All right, so what we can do now is, if you go to a new record, we can check before the user actually saves the value to the table, we wanna check to see if this guy has a meal ID, right? No meal ID up here, then no savey savey down here, right? And we can do that in the before insert event of the subform, right? That way they can make their selection, but before it gets saved to the table, then we can check it, cancel it if need be, right? Okay, so let's go into design view. Save all these objects if you had, I was messing around off camera. All right, come in here, click on it once to get the sub form, click on it a second time to get the form properties, double click right there. Let's go to events, let's find the before insert event, right? It runs when the first character is typed into a new record before it gets saved to the table. You have the option to cancel it if you want to. So dot, dot, dot. There we go. All right. So I'm going to check to make sure there's a parent at this point. If there's no parent, then the parent record's meal ID will be zero or null. Right? So if is null parent meal ID or parent meal ID is zero. It should never, well, no, it, it'll be, it should be zero theoretically, but you never know when that null sneaks in there. So I always check for it. Then do some stuff. All right, what's the stuff? Well, you could status it if you want to use the status box or message box it. For something like this, I want to, I want to put it in their face. So I'm going to use a message box, message box. You, mu you must try the hostage special. <laughs> What's that from, anybody? You must enter a meal name first. And then VB critical. Right? It's critical. You could speak it if you want to, if you if you if you remember. Okay? Now, at this point, I don't want to let them continue. Because there's no So I want to cancel. Cancel equals true. And in addition to just canceling and leaving him sitting there on that box. Let's undo their edit, okay, me.undo, that gets rid of what they just did, and let's put them where they need to be. Let's be helpful and friendly and put them up in that meal name box. Parent, if I can spell, parent, description, dot, set, focus. Okay, everybody with me? All right, save it. Debug compile once in a while. Come back over here. Meow. Let's close it. Close it. Open it. Let's give it a try. Ready? Come down here first and add apple. Oh, you must enter a meal name first. Okay. Oh, and look at that. I'm sitting right there. All right. Let's make a, a new meal. Happy popcorn. Okay. And now I can add an apple to my happy popcorn meal. Why is an apple in the happy pot? I don't know. Maybe it's Maybe it's popcorn with made with apples. I don't know. There we go. Okay. Looks pretty good. One thing I'm noticing is we're adding items down here that we're not updating our total up there. So in the after update event for this guy, actually we could probably do it in the after update event for the form because it could be either this or this, and we don't have to put it in both places. And let's try the, sometimes the form works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have to use the individual fields. 
Now, since we're already in the code window over here for the sub form, let's just see. We got the food combo. We're gonna stay in the food. No, we're gonna go to the we're gonna go to the form property. So go to the form. Remember now, this is the form meal detail app where we want to be. We want to go to now it's after update event. Where's after update? There it is. Okay, we're in the form after update event of the sub form. This guy. Okay, when you make a change in here, we want to refresh this guy. So what's that gonna look like? Well, what's the name of that? We need to get the name of that guy. I think it's meal list F. This thing here is meal list F. We wanna refresh that thing. So it's gonna be parent because we gotta go up to the parent form because we're in the sub form now. Bang, meal list F. That's that sub form up top with the aggregate query, blah, blah, blah in it, right? It's a form, so dot form, dot record set, dot requery. Requery it in place, in other words. Okay, save it, debug compile. Let's take a peek, ready? Let's go to where we're happy popcorn. All right, let's make this two. And now watch up top, that 504 should change. Yep, 599, got that in it, right? See, let's add something new. Let's add uh, Amritabar. And as soon as you leave the record, boom, 849 in both places. Oh, we're cooking with gas, okay. Now, one more thing we need to do today, and I wanna add an add button down here. Now, members, we're gonna get rid of this stuff. I know we spent a whole extended cut building it, and I really, really love it, but we're gonna get rid of it in the extended cut and do something better that I really like, because I've been playing with this, I've been using it on my own, I think this is a little clunky. The better solution that we're gonna do in today's extended cut is we're gonna open up this guy. Let me resize this so we can see it. We're gonna open up that guy and we're gonna add stuff over here. We're gonna say, okay, I wanna add fruits, I wanna add this banana, I'm gonna hit a little button here, boom, add it over here into the meal. Pick something else, hit the add button, boom, brings it over here. And we don't need to have this in addition to being able to use this. I think it's just redundant and this takes up too much room that we can use for other things. So, let's delete these. We'll nuke the code in the extended cut. I'm gonna repurpose this button and we're gonna call this add new. And we're gonna make it look like the other button over here, the add new button. Because I want these to kind of mimic each other. So that they, what, what behaves, what this does, this kind of behaves over here like that too. In fact, let's rename it. What do we call it over here? Design view. This is the add new button. Let's rename it. This guy is now gonna be the add new button. Try to keep them the same. All right, so what do we gotta do to add a new meal down here? Well, right click, build event. We're going to Let's turn the filter off if they have it filtered. Okay, so me.filter on equals false. Let's go to a new record. Do command dot go to record, comma, comma, AC new rec. And then let's uh, description dot set focus. And that's really all you have to do to add a record on this form. Because it's, it's a lot nicer, especially for noobs. And I say noobs, you know, uh, I don't use noob as a uh, as a disparaging comment. I, you know, everyone started somewhere sometime. Not everybody is as uh, savvy with computers as we are. If you're following these my videos, you're definitely a little little computer savvy, right? You're programming in VBA, but you but you might have you know your 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 family members using this database, and they might not realize that this is where you go to add a new record. Oh, add new. Oh, that's nice and easy. See, I'm gonna put some right there. And they're gonna add happy popcorn part two. <laughs> okay. All right. We need to also add delete and requery buttons just like this guy has. We'll do that in the next video or coming up very soon. I, I, I should stop saying in the next video. It's on my list to do next, but you know what? Sometimes between now and when I sit down tomorrow to record, I, I think of, I, I, get, I do my best thinking I don't want to say, uh, let's, let's say on the throne. So <laughs> and sometimes I just randomly, these thoughts will pop in my head or, or like if I record a video before bed, like I'm doing now, it's after midnight. 
I, I love doing my recording at night. Um, I'll, I'll think about it. First thing when I wake up, I'll think about the last video that I recorded and I'll have, oh, what if we did this? What if we did that? And I got to immediately grab my phone and take notes or, or I'll forget it. Um, and sometimes I come up with some really great ideas and then I just ignore what I had in my, in my notes from, from today. So that's why I jump around a little bit. But yes, we're going to add delete and recreate buttons. They're really easy. Uh, we'll get to those soon. Members, we're going to do that. We're going to make a little button right there to add whatever the current food item is to the meal that's open. That's going to be really cool. I think you're going to like it a lot more than having the little cascading combo boxes down there. But I don't regret building those cascading combo boxes, especially if you've never done them before, because that was a great learning experience. All right. But now, now that I've been using the database, like I, this has been the whole theme so far of this series is that, you know, you, you start off with one thing in mind, but as, as you get to using it and working with it and other people work with it and I get feedback and you give, give me feedback, you know, and I, I write my own feedback, you change stuff. Databases are living, breathing, evolving things without the breathing part. And well, I don't know, I guess you could make it breathe. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so you're going to make changes. This is, I think, is a great change. We're going to do it in the extended cut. Everybody else, click that join button now if you want to see how we do it. But that's going to do it for today. That's your part 20. Hope you learned something. Hit that like, subscribe, post a comment, all that good stuff. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part 21. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.